should be working to complete programming assignment three. If you haven't started, I recommend that you start as soon as possible. It's pretty, it's more challenging than the prior two assignments, and so it's going to take you more, more time to complete. Um, assignment four is going to be out. Um, usually these are due on Sunday, so assignment three is due Sunday. <laughs> assignment four will come out for you to solve next week, and then you should be working on lab three and four. Exercises, meetings, today we're starting a new topic, and then really all of next week we're going to spend a lot of time covering these, uh, these topics. So essentially class hierarchies, inheritance, polymorphisms. So kind of Gail's recommendation is that you really, really focus on these next class. We're going to cover a lot of stuff, and then we're going to build on it. So a lot of the things that we're going to do after midterm one, again, build on this material. So if you don't get it, like in these lectures, you're going to be really lost. So uh, we're going to cover a lot, and we're going to move pretty quickly. So this is, you know, if you have one week to focus in the class, then you want to focus on the material presented in this. Problem description. So it seems that you know building a, a system that has the following description, this, the following specification. Right? I essentially have some kind of restaurant, and I want to build a system that would allow patrons of that restaurant to pay by credit card. And so, uh, you know, when my credit card is taken, the credit card must first be validated. Uh, and then the amount must be authorized uh, before the payment can be completed. And what I want to do is support two kinds of credit cards, the ASIP cards and the subordinate cards. Right. So this is my specification. And what we're going to do over a number of lectures is kind of develop, develop code, develop Java code that will implement the specification. And we'll go through a couple of different versions, different iterations. So for all of you who have laptops, you can check out this project from your lectures repository, which is the type poly dispatch starter. So this project uh, contains a lot of stuff, and it has this really strange name because we're attempting to cover multiple topics within this one, this one example code. Here. So let's, let's start it off. project that opened it in Eclipse. It's, uh, it's really a project that contains many, many sub-projects. So you'll notice that it has packages that have names like phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, phase 5. So it's really kind of an umbrella project. There's going to be a lot of code. And so to start with, we'll just look at phase 1. So in the, in the phase one code, kind of at the top level, you'll see a, a readme file. And the readme file will essentially describe what, this, this, what the implementation within phase one implements. You know, what part of the specification that I just showed you, you know, is in the code, what is implemented. So this helps you kind of understand what's going on in phase one. Because phase two is going to include more code and it's going to build on it. So what does phase one have? So phase one, uh, it has a test. It's good to have a test. Make sure things are working properly. And then we have two credit cards. Or really, we have one credit card. Sorry, it's ASIP card. And the ASIP card implements the credit card interface, which is the other file in this project. All right, so the so remember interfaces? So this is defining an interface, because at the top it says public interface. And an interface just defines the signatures of the methods. It tells us what methods are legal to call on objects of classes that implement this interface. So there's really only two, two methods here. And what we want to do with a credit card, if we have an instance, we want to first authorize the amount. And then we're going to complete the payment. 
And then there's some constraints on exactly what does it mean to authorize. So for example, you can't authorize an amount that's negative or zero. If you authorize an amount, you probably <laughs> modify some internal state for a credit card. And then the effect is that you know, now we go into some kind of authorized state once we invoke this method. So after we've authorized the amount, we can complete the payment. So really simple, right? Two, two methods. You first call authorize amount, then you call complete payment. And so we're going to build on this code to develop kind of this, this project this way. So the first thing to notice is that we already have a class, ACIF card, which implements this credit card interface. So if it implements the interface, it must have those same methods, and it needs implementations for those. So down below, you see that it has, you know, there's a constructor, and then there's an authorize amount method, but now there's an entire implementation for it with lots of comments so that you can figure out, figure out what's going on. And then there's the complete payment method. So it's all there, right? So there's the implementation. So the first step in working towards this, towards this description is that we need to create the subordinate card. Right? So a subordinate class is really what we need. So this guy is going to be a class. This guy is already a class. So we need to add a new class to the project. Great. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll do that. So I'll create a new class. And let's see if I can spell this right. Subordinate card. So I'll create a new subordinate card. And the subordinate card will be very much like the ASIP card. It'll have the exact same implementation. So what I'll do is I'll just copy just all of this implementation from the ASIF card into the subordinate card. Of course, what's going to break is that my constructor is going to break, right? It has the wrong name, so I have to fix that. Subordinate card, hold up. So now I have two cards in my project. I have my ASIF card, I have my subordinate card, and both of them implement the same interface. So they implement the credit card interface. Right, so, so far so good. It seems, like, it seems like we're pretty close to kind of this description. Except the problem is that in order to have the second card, I just copied a bunch of code. Right, so I have virtually identical two classes that implement this interface. Why is that, why is that bad? Why is that a bad idea? Happen in a project. Um, if you change you know, the way the credit card works and you'd have to change them between both classes. Yeah, so when I copy code and I want to introduce a change to one copy of that code, because perhaps I want to fix a bug in one copy of that code, then I have to fix the second copy of that code as well. <coughs> Alright, so when I copy code, it creates a dependency between those, between those copies. And I have to track it somehow. So copying code is a really bad idea in large projects. Because you may introduce new dependencies, and that will be more difficult to fix by. So really, what a lot of the lecture today is going to be about is how do we eliminate this code copy? Right? I have this class that implements an interface. I have another class that implements the same interface. And some of the code between those two classes is going to be very similar. Right, so let me um, actually draw this. You can draw the class diagram for this, right? So this is the same exercise that we did last time with interfaces, where my, my class diagram essentially looks like this. I have a credit card interface at the top. And this guy defines a few methods. <coughs> so the methods it defines are authorized amount complete payment. So I'll just say auth amount. Da, da, da. And then I have the two classes. 
going to implement this interface. So if my class is implement the interface, I have this notation where I get the dotted line. I say that this class is implement. So both of these are the classes must have implementations for authorized amount. And so I have some implementation here, and I have some implementation here. And they're identical. <coughs> right? And that's where the problem lies. So programmers in general are really, really lazy. So if you as a developer are tasked with writing a large piece of code, you don't want to copy and paste code. Right? That takes, that takes work. That creates more code that you have to maintain. So you want to eliminate these copies. So today we're going to talk about how we're going to do that in a principled way, within the object-oriented kind of Java, Java code. Okay, but before we do that, I'm actually going to look at the test and show you the test. So, the first notion we're going to need is this notion of actual and apparent take. So I can run the test for the credit card phase one. And all of them are going to pass. And if I look within this get credit card's test, I have this A credit card instance. And this A credit card is defined at the very top. And the definition says that it's defined as a credit card. The type of this variable is credit card. So this type, we call the apparent type. So it's apparent because it's what you actually write in the code. So the type that I see in the code is the apparent type of, of, this, of this variable. But of course, a credit card is going to be instantiated at some point. So I'm going to assign some instantiation of a class. So like here, I created a new A sub card. And when I create this new ASIP card, this A credit card has a reference to an object of ASIP card. And the type of A credit card, the actual type of A credit card, is ASIP card at this location on the code. So if I, if I set a breakpoint here and I execute this set of tests, then they'll run and they'll break point here, they'll stop. So I can find out that the type of A credit card, if I hover over it, or rather, it, yeah, I can even look at the variables that are defined within this. I see that A credit card is an ASIP card, right? So it has some value which is an ASIP card object. So that is the actual type of this variable at this point in time. But the apparent type of this variable is specified in code. And the apparent type is credit, yeah, is credit card. Okay. Any questions about that distinction between kind of the, the type of the variable at runtime and then the type of the variable as it is defined in the code? So that's the, that's the primary difference. So let me stop these tests. Stop these tests and talk about how we're going to get rid of this, doc this duplication. So now I'm going to look in phase two of the project. And phase two also has a readme. It already has the code that I just added. Right, so I have same stuff. I have the credit card. It's an interface. 
has the same two methods. I have the ASIP card, which is going to implement this interface. And I have the subordinate card, which will implement this interface. So to get rid of this duplication, I'm going to define a new class. And this class is going to be an abstract class. So I'm now introducing kind of a new, a new notion. So I'll add a new class. I'm called this guy abstract predicate. And I'll take this abstract class. So when I create an abstract class, just add this little keyword in front of the class name. It says public abstract class, abstract predicate. And what I can do is place that duplicated code into this abstract class. So to get rid of the, the, the duplication, I can take the code from ASIP card. Let me take, uh, take both of the methods. I'll copy them and I'll add them to my abstract credit card. Get rid of the overrides. Currently, my code doesn't compile. I need these fields, right? <coughs> so these methods refer to the fields that are in the ASIP card. So I'm going to copy the ASIP card field as well and add them to the abstract class that I just added. So now my abstract class has no problems, no compilation issues. And what I've done is essentially refactor the duplicate code into this new class, this abstract class. And now what I'll do is <coughs> I need to tell Java that there's a relationship between these two classes. There's a relationship between ASIP card and the abstract credit card. And the relationship is an extends relationship. So ASIP card extends an abstract credit card. And remember, I was going to get rid of all of this duplicated code. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Is that code that I copied? You can now remove from ASIP, from ASIP card. The one change that I really need to do to make is turn this private field with an abstract credit card into a public field. Because I want this field to be visible with an ASIP card. And that gets rid of this. So what, is, what, did, what did I just do? I created a class that contains all of the code, all of the implementation that I previously had in ASIP card. And I said that there's this extends relationship between the two classes. So I can do the same thing for the subordinate card. Right, so I have the subordinate card. Remember, it has the same code. So I do the same exact thing. I'll delete this duplicate code. And then I'll say that the subordinate card now extends my abstract credit card. So what this does is I got rid of the duplication. And one way to picture this is as follows. So my schematic was that I have a credit card interface. And then I had these two classes that implemented the interface. Well, now I'm changing this diagram. What I'm doing is I'm adding another entity. And that entity is called abstract credit card. So it's going to lie. Ah, good. Thanks for telling me. So we're back in kind a of very similar picture as before. I have the interface at the top. I have the two classes here. This is going to be the ASIP card. This will be the subordinate card. And what I did in my code is I added a new class. And I called it an abstract credit card. I 
And the relationship between abstract credit card and these two classes below is this extends keyword. And it's a subtype relationship. And to indicate this relationship, I draw this solid, solid arrow in my diagram. classes are subtypes of abstract credit card, right? But they're also subclasses of abstract credit card. So there's actually two relationships. And subclass refers to the fact that these two classes share some of the implementation that's inside the abstract credit card. Whereas the subtype relationship refers to the fact that instances of these classes have the same set of methods. Or similar set of methods, because they're subtypes. So the one thing that's missing is the link to this interface. And this interface at the top. And the interface has this nice specification. So in order to link it to this diagram, what I can do is have the abstract credit card which now contains the implementation. Right? What I can do is I can say that it implements the credit card interface. So now the picture is more complete. Now I have abstract credit card, and it implements this interface, so that's the dash line. So the complete diagram looks like this. Abstract credit card implements credit card. And then the ASIP card? The board net card extend abstract credit card. Or subclass the abstract credit card. So in Java, extends is a keyword for subclass. And subclass is the more, more generic notion in object-oriented programming language. Extend the class. Does the class have to have the abstract keyword? In order to extend the class, does the class need an abstract keyword? No. Uh, I'll tell you the difference between an abstract and a non-abstract class. But right now, you can actually add many more classes below these. Right, so if I wanted to extend ASIP card, because I had a new kind of ASIP card, for example, I could draw like this, right? So it could extend non-abstract classes. Yeah. You can see it. It's a much more. I mean, so, we can't see below the Ah. Uh, I just draw a little box with an arrow. Not much to see. So I, I can essentially define new subclasses that extend my existing classes. Now, the reason this guy is abstract is because You'll note that it's a little bit different from these other classes. Do you guys see any difference in the code? <laughs> so when I moved things over, I moved everything except for some things. What did I not move over into my abstract class? The constructor, right? So if I look at ASIP card, the constructor is the only thing that's left. And the subordinate card is the same. All I have left in these two classes is the constructor, nothing else. So the abstract class doesn't have a constructor. And that's per on purpose. The abstract class is the kind of class that I can't instantiate. 
So this abstract class, I cannot actually build an object of the abstract class, abstract credit card. What that means is that my actual type for an object in my program will never be abstract credit card. Right? Where the actual type is the type that I see at runtime when I run the program. So what this really means is that so from this relationship, now we can write a bunch of code, right? And we can ask, is that code legal or not? So for example, I can say credit card C equals new and this is legal, right? So this is going to be my actual type at runtime, and this is my apparent type of C. Right? That's what I declared C to be in my code. So that's the apparent type. But I'm assigning it to an object that is an ASIC card, and so that's going to be the actual type of runtime. What about this? Could I do this? Could I create a credit card? This doesn't work because credit card is an interface. I cannot create an instance of an interface because my interface has no implementation. So if I look in credit card, there's no code. How can I create an object out of this interface when it doesn't implement anything? Right? So it's an abstraction. I cannot actually create this abstraction. I have to implement it. All right. So another thing I could do is I could say abstract credit card, call this AC, equals new ASIP card. So I could do this. And the reason I can do this is because of the subtype relationship. ASIF card is a subtype of abstract credit, credit card. So I can make this assignment. This assignment is legal. So the current type of AC is abstract credit card, but the actual type of AC is going to be ASIF card at runtime. Of course, my subtype relationship <coughs> applies equally to ASIF card and also to the subordinate card. So I could just as well say that AC equals new subordinate card. So this is also legal. What about this? AC equals new abstract credit card. No, right? <coughs> abstract credit card is an abstract class. I cannot instantiate it. That's what abstract is supposed to mean, right? And it has no constructor. So if you look at my code, my abstract credit card has no constructor. And if I add one, there better be an error, right? So if I create a public <coughs> abstract credit card, Can't have a constructor, but it can't instantiate. So 
So my mistake. You could have a constructor in an abstract class, but you can't call it. So the reason you want a constructor in this guy is because um, I may want to share. So for example, now both of these constructors have code. Like subordinate card assigns card number equals number, and ace of card says card number equals number. So what I could do is I could take this code. So again, we have duplication. So I could take this code and put it in my constructor, in my abstract class. Of course, I'm going to have to pass this number, which is a string. So I could do this. And now I can remove this pole. In this code. And then I have the following call to my super type. So the abstract credit card is the super type of subordinate card and also ASIP card. And the way I interact with it, right, so there's some code here. If I want to call this code from this subclass. The way I refer to my super type is with the super keyword. So this is exactly what this does. Right, I'm calling the constructor of my super. And super is abstract credit card. I can also do something like super dot authorize amount. So I'm calling a method. The only difference between these is this is a constructor and this is a non-constructor. Any questions? You guys look confused. Rightfully so. Yeah. Um, I'm not clear on the difference between a subclass and a subtype. Um, can you have one without using the other and vice versa? Subclass and a subtype. Yes, you could have one without the other. So, for example, this interface, credit card, it has no, no class, it's an interface, right? So, you could have the credit card be a subtype for a different interface. Right, so right now, credit card could be a a subtype of, you know, payment part, perhaps. So this relationship is going to be a subtype relationship, but it's not a subclass. It's not a subclass because credit card is not a class; it has no implementation, and payment card is also not a class; it has no implementation. So the subclass relationship only refers to this solid. Solid line, right? Which can connect classes, not interfaces. So I cannot subclass an interface because my interface has no implementation. So um, is a uh, subtype when something is implementing something? Yeah, the subtype is captured by the implements keyword. So. If you look at my abstract credit card class, it implements credit card. So that's a subtype relationship. But the extends keyword is also a subtype relationship. And really, what subtype means from a coding point of view is this kind of analysis. Right, so for example, uh, if I had a subordinate. Same level in terms of class? 
They're on the same level, but you know, levels are mostly bounded by paper here. But really what it says is that there's no, there's no relationship between these, right? They relate to this guy. And more specifically, subordinate card is not a subtype of a sub card. If it was a subtype, there would be an, an arrow this way. Because that arrow is not there, I cannot do this in my code. Right, so this is not allowed. Of course, the inverse of this is also not allowed. So I cannot assign an ASIF card, you know, AC, to be a new subordinate card. I can instantiate them, right? So, so subtype refers to, you know, can I, ref can I create a variable of a type and then assign it to an instance of another type? And the way I resolve that, the way I answer whether that's possible or not, is I reason about the type hierarchy. So what I have here is the type hierarchy. Credit card is a super type. It's a super type for everything. So I could say credit card C equals new ASIC card. Abstract credit card is also a super type for ASIC card and subordinate card. And then these classes at the bottom, they're not super types for anyone. They would be if I create some more classes down below. Right. So I refactored everything, including the constructor. So when we use super, uh, in parentheses number, that means that we're taking the number from an abstract credit card to the initial, initial state of Asian card. Or yeah, so the super calls my super class, and the super class is the abstract credit card. So that's, I just refer to it with super. So if I want to call, so it's kind of like this. This refers to me, and super refers to my, my super class, right? One level up the hierarchy. And so if I want to call the constructor of super, well, in that case, I just add super entity doctor. Except that super takes an argument. Okay, it takes a number. So I have to give it a number. And I'll give it the same number that I received. <coughs> I have to use super for calling method, which is what this line is. So the super keyword allows me to go up the hierarchy. Right, so when I'm here, my super is abstract credit card. When I'm here, my super is abstract credit card. What about abstract credit card? Does it have a super? No. So there is no super class for abstract credit card. Because this is not a class, it's an interface. Right. So it's a subtype for the credit card. It does have a super type, right? It does have a super type, which is credit. Card. So, cover a lot. And it's pretty confusing. So, yeah. I'm sorry, can you explain the difference between subtype and subclass again? Subtype and subclass, right. So let's look at this diagram again. So abstract credit card is a subtype of credit card. ASIP card is a subtype of abstract credit card. Abstract credit card is a super type of ASIP card. Right, that's identical. So type within, within this diagram, super type and subtype refers to where you are in, you know, in this graph. If you're higher up, you're a super type. If you're lower, you're a sub type. Super class talks about implementation. So this the class relation basically exists just for this section of the diagram. Right. Because they cannot instantiate a credit card. Credit card has no implementation. So it's not a super class of anything, and it's not a subclass of anything. So abstract credit card is a superclass of ASIP card and a subordinate card. 
Another way of saying that is ASIF card is a subclass of abstract card card, and subordinate card is a subclass of abstract card. So the subclass relationship talks about implementation. And that's the key difference of this abstract class, as I said, right? We introduced it so that it could hold this common implementation part. And that's the difference between an abstract class and an interface. So my interface just defines the set of methods that I expect in a type. So does the subclass have to extend its superclass? Yes. Subtype needs to extend a superclass. It's Let's try that. <coughs> AC equals what? Oh, so it's still plus line and This guy. Um, no, a line of this yes. AC equals new abstract credit card. No. Why can't we do this? But don't we have a constructor of We do have a constructor, but it's an abstract class. So this is not allowed. So, so this, no, because abstract credit card is an abstract class. But remember, this, this subclass relation doesn't need to include an abstract class. So this abstract credit card, I called it an abstract credit card because I don't want to create instances of it. But if I wanted to, I would actually just remove abstract keyword. <coughs> so I could just remove the abstract keyword and it's going to work. And now, this line is legal because it's no longer abstract. So why would I want an abstract class in the first place? Why would I want a class that I can't instantiate? <laughs> you don't have to copy all the codes in the different types of class. Yeah, I mean, in some, in some sense, this class is incomplete. So when you say that something is abstract, you're basically saying that you know, there's going to be some details that are going to be left out of this class. And the reason you can't instantiate interfaces is because it has no implementation. Usually the reason you can't instantiate an abstract class is because it has a partial implementation. So what I could do with an abstract class is I could add a new abstract method. I could define something like public abstract void foo. So this thing at the bottom looks very much looks very much like an interface. Right? I just defined you know, defined a foo method that is not implemented. So an abstract class mixes features of an implementation, like a class, and then features of an interface. So this abstract class right now <coughs> contains a method foo, which is abstract, and doesn't have doesn't provide an implementation for it. One way of thinking about it is that it says, oh, if you want an implementation of this method, you need to look at my subclasses. Because those subclasses will implement this method. Okay? So right now, actually, you see that my project doesn't compile. And if I go there and, and I look at the error, the problem is the type subordinate card must implement the inherited abstract method, abstract credit card dot food. What this is saying is that in order for this to be a class, in order for this to be a non-abstract class, I actually have to provide the implementation of all of the methods that were abstract in my super class. <coughs> so here I need to say something like public void food and then 
give implementation. When I do this, I satisfy that error. So this very much resembles an interface, where my interface says, okay, so every instance that's going to implement me is going to support this method. This method is food. And then when you have another class that implements the method, or here extends this abstract class, it must provide an implementation for food. Would you only um, implement, sorry, would you only have a, an abstract method if you wanted to implement the method differently in two different subclasses? Right. Yeah, the only reason I, I would do this is because the implementation presumably depends on the subclass. So perhaps the ASAP card behaves differently than subordinate card in Foo. So let's say I had something like uh, to do accounting. Right? And so, in subordinate card, this do accounting method right, say something like no accounting. Right? And then my ASAP card, I'm going to add do accounting. And here I'll actually do something very specific. Right? Like, report on the user if they didn't pay their taxes. Right, so the implementation of do accounting differs between the two subclasses. Right, here I'm doing no accounting, here I'm reporting on the user. And that's a really good reason to make this method an abstract method, because at the level of abstract credit card, you can't actually determine what you need to do in do accounting. That needs to be determined by the subclasses, the specific classes that extend to the superclass. Okay, great. So we're going to practice this a whole lot in the next couple of lectures. What I want to do, one more thing before we break, is actually look at the tests. So this type hierarchy that we created uh, doesn't just pertain to the implementation. It also pertains to tests. And that might be a little weird. So here, I have an abstract class credit card test. It contains the actual test. Right? So it has implementation of a certain test. And then just as before, I have the corresponding test for the two kinds of credit cards, the ace of cards and the subordinate cards. And they both extend this shared set of Tests. So when I run these tests, I'm actually going to run the tests for both of these, and they're going to appear in the book. Because they subclass credit card tests, and so they share this common implementation of tests. So this is also very useful for generating test hierarchies as well. Okay, great. We'll continue with this next week.